Hello, welcome to the Monday, February 25th, 2019 edition of the Sands and the Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Augusta, Georgia. When we talk about ransomware, we often talk about Windows systems getting infected by your standard mail spam or users visiting suspect websites. But ransomware also affects servers. And we have two stories about this uh, today. The first one is about what's referred to as the Prontoc ransomware so far. It appears to only affect Linux servers so far. However, very little is known about this ransomware. So not necessarily sure whether it's targeting the Linux servers, how it's targeting them. In the past, Linux ransomware has often just been uploaded using either standard vulnerabilities like Drupal, of course, if you had a recent one or weak passwords. What's a little bit different about this ransomware is that it also encrypts the file names. Uh, but of course, encrypted file names may include binary characters that are not printable or allowable as a file name. So what they're doing actually, they're then URL encoding these file names to allow for these odd byte values. Also, the files themselves appear to be encrypted and then base64 encoded. I'm not really sure why they do this, but uh, maybe again, they're trying to make this a little bit easier on the encoding side or just the crypto library that they use produces base64 encoded output. The second ransomware targeting Linux devices uh, goes according to the Bleeding Computer Forum by the name of Cryptor and targets ancient D-Link devices, in particular DNS320 devices using a vulnerability that was originally discovered in 2012. However, these DNS320 devices are no longer supported and I don't think that an updated firmware was ever released for these devices. So if you still have one, then you are very vulnerable. On the other hand, not really clear if any unexploited vulnerable devices are still around. The exploit is trivial. Essentially with these devices, nothing in the CGI bin directory is authenticated. So of course there are scripts in this directory that will execute arbitrary commands and these scripts scripts are then used in order to execute the crypto ransomware in this case. Crypto ransomware on these network storage devices, of course, has always been sort of a hot topic. Cinelocker was probably the biggest one out there that sort of made the news a couple of years ago. And uh, in that case, people sort of got lucky in the bad guy actually releasing the crypto keys for free. And as I always say about these devices, they should never be exposed to the internet directly, even if they are fully patched. And Proofpoint is reporting how some bad actors are using LinkedIn in order to make their malware more plausible and trick users into installing it. The way this works is that the victim will first be contacted via LinkedIn and they're being told that, well, there is a new job offer for them, some similar job that they already have and uh, if they would like to know more about it. And then within a few days, the attacker then follows up with an email to the victim with a link to a PDF that will then install malware. The entire job offer and resume trick, of course, has been quite old and probably sort of running its course to some extent uh, based on people kind of being aware of this. But what we do see more often are sort of these multi-stage phishing campaigns, even in not very targeted campaigns where the attacker will first send a benign message to start a conversation with the victim and then follow up at some point with a malicious link. In this case, of course, 
course, the use of LinkedIn is also helping the attacker to establish some kind of rapport with the victim. Not clear if the attackers are using accounts that they set up themselves or if they are using stolen accounts, which of course makes it even more plausible if someone that you had already some relationship, some message exchanges with in the past is all for a sudden sending you this job offer. The text, I don't really consider all that sophisticated that was posted here by proof point and it's very sort of similar in being somewhat generic to some of the mail spam emails that you probably have seen with unsolicited resumes or job offers. Well, this is it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.